What is going on guys, DBG here, and last week in my most overpowered players were under 5k, I said if this video, if that video hit 250 likes, I'd do another one and hit it within a day. So this video is going to be 3 more overpowered players for less than 5k MT. If this video hits 300 likes, yes 300 likes, I will do a most overpowered players for under 10k MT, and we'll release that maybe next Thursday, next Friday when I get the time. So yeah, 300 likes for most overpowered players over 10k. First up we have got Ruby Keith Van Horn. This guy is about 4000 MT and if you look at this, just these badges, corner specialist, mid range Jedi, deep range Jedi, limitless range, pick and pop or catch and shoot. This guy is extremely, extremely versatile. 6 foot 10 which means it can play at the power forward and it's an extremely good stretch forward and actually I kind of like using it as a two guard, kind of like a page, playing like Pejo Stojakovic. Look at this, that's nothing exceptional. 75 post fade away is decent. Open shot mid range, 88, really good. Open shot three of 90, has a really nice release, so it goes in a lot. 86 free throw. Decent rebounding means he can definitely put it in at the four. On ball defense, not awful. Not great, but not awful at 78. Driving dunk set 65 is actually a lot better, to be honest. 74 speed with ball, 74 speed is decent, especially if you're playing him as a, as a four. That's really good to have. This guard has an awful lot of hot zones, but it's two really annoying cold zones. The right corner, which means pretty much corner specialist in that corner is useless, and the top middle, which means pick and popper, essentially is counteracted. While it does have the badges to kind of counteract these cold zones, it means that the badges like pick and popper and corner specialist, especially in that other corner, don't work as well as they should. But this card as a shooter is extremely versatile. It can play the two, the three, and the four, and as a catch and shoot player is exceptional. Mid range shot, really good. Deadeye works extremely well with this card. Really nice quick release. Easy enough to get green releases, obviously I didn't here. And he was gonna drop out 40 in this game and then they shut down. People can play my, my record. I literally have proof of all these games being discounted. As a passer, he's good, not too bad. Actually, for some reason, he blocked an awful lot of shots and played decent inside defense. He can play defense inside and can score inside extremely well. Which means even though this card is a shooter, and that's what you have it for, it can score inside, which means it's not just one dimensional like most shooters. If you look at this, jamming it over LeBron, but really this card is a shooter. Really nice release, can shoot from anywhere, and has extremely good shooting badges. So for 5k, there's not that many better shooters in the game. Next up, we have got a card that is less than 3k MT, and it's Sapphire Wiggins. This card is exceptional. This card is absolutely exceptional. Badges, I picked up mine for 3000 MT with all these badges. But yeah, six foot eight, decent. 86 offense, 85 defense. Let's look at these stats. 90 driving layup, 77 post fadeaway, which is good. Open shot mid range, 81. Off dribble, 80, which is not bad at all. 81 open shot three. Well, he's not gonna hit many contested or any off dribble of 45. He is, if he's wide open, he is gonna hit an awful lot of him with that 81 open shot three. 76 free throw with a nice release isn't bad. Passing stats don't really matter because he is a flat out score. Rebounding not great, so you couldn't really play him as a stretch four. On ball defense 82 is solid. Driving dunk though 95. Speed 84. Acceleration 86. Vertical 98. Speed about 81. This card is scary quick. Like so, so quick, and as a score, is exceptional. So hot zones. Wiggins has a hot zone in the left corner, which is solid because that's really where you're only going to be getting open shots from. But the hot zone in and around the basket is extremely helpful, especially because you're going to get the majority of your scores of Wiggins off layups and dunks. Wiggins has a really nice release, but to be honest, I wouldn't shoot many threes at him, especially off the dribble, things like that, because they're just not going to go in. Wiggins has four hot zones, two of them two of the main spots you're gonna shoot threes, so I wouldn't use this card as a three point shooter, even though it can hit them when it's wide open, this card is exceptional as a slasher. So Wiggins, first of all, draws fouls really well. And with a 76 free throw and a really nice release, it's gonna hit nearly all of them. But once this card gets running, it's basically unguardable. On the break, once this card gets any sort of a head of steam, once it gets into its stride, it's basically unstoppable. Any sort of contact, it can still finish layups, it can outrun most players, and even the half court set, once you blow by your guy, you're gonna dunk it at maybe 50% of the time. Wiggins around the ring is exceptional. I didn't hit a jump shot with him. I couldn't hit a jump shot with him. But anything around the ring, this card was unbelievable. And to be honest, if it's wide open, I've used other Wiggins to know that it can hit wide open jump shots. 
but anything around the ring gets dunked. Any bit of space is going straight to the basket. And even here, at the end of the game, really tight game, makes a really good outlet pass to Chris Bosch. So overall, this card is just exceptional. And last up, we have got one of the best all-around centers in the game, and it is Joel Embiid. He may have overtaken this Al Horford as my favorite center in my team, just because they're basically the same player, but he's two inches taller. So Joel Embiid, 70 post fadeaway, 70 post hook. I don't really use him much inside. Post hook is decent. Post fadeaway, I don't think I've hit a single one with him. Um, open shot mid range 85, and he has a nice enough release, which means it goes in and off a lot. Open shot 3 of 81. If he's contested or he's dribbling, he's not going to make a shot, but if he's spotting up, he can hit an awful lot of jump shots. So, every air free throw is extremely good, and when he gets hot, it goes up very quickly. Passing IQ doesn't really matter. 88 defensive, 80 offensive rebound, and the fact he's 7 foot means he gets a lot of rebounds. 91 block. So, that's like the same as lockdown Hakeem Olajuwon. It's really, really good. Low post defense of IQ, 81 is good. Uh, standing dunk, 80, even though it feels a lot higher. Speed, 73, again, is really good for center. Not going to push the ball, but overall, this guy can play inside, can play outside, plays defense, rebounds, and it's just an extremely good overall center, and probably the best overall center you can get for less than 5K. So this Joel Embiid literally has no hot zones or no cold zones. That could be seen as a blessing or a curse, but in my opinion, I actually think it's better to have no cold zones than to have 50% hot, 50% cold. Because it means you don't have to think about where to shoot from. It's going to shoot similar from everywhere on the court. So it means you don't have to think, oh crap, I can't shoot here because it's a cold zone, or I must shoot here because it's a hot zone. Unless you have a badly corner specialist, pretty much everywhere on the court, this card's going to shoot the same, and I think that's actually a big, big positive. And Embiid pretty much can do everything inside and outside. While I didn't have that much success with post moves in this game, in other games he was really good, but rebounding was really good. As a shooter, he can shoot really well for mid-range and long-range. As a playmaking big, it actually did quite well. It seemed to pass well, and of course, it's always going to block shots. Seven foot tall, 91 block, it's going to block a lot of shots. If MB gets the ball anywhere near the ring, he's going to dunk it. And it gets fouled an awful lot, and with a decent free throw release and a 78 rating, it's going to do extremely well. As a pick and roll big, you can't get much better, and anything near the ring, it's going down. Every single time. Three point shooting is actually decent. This card has got a nice release on 81 open shot three, which is good. Post moves, I didn't use them much, but in general, it's been good for me. And yeah, the usual, anywhere near the ring, it dunks. That 80 standing dunk is a lie. So anyway, that's the video. These are just three overpowered players that are less than 5K MT. And like I said at the start, if this video can hit 300 likes, I will do a most overpowered players for less than 10K MT next week. There's actually so many overpowered cheap players in this game, and I've only covered six of I don't know how many. So throughout the year, especially when cards are going down, I will keep doing overpowered players for less than 5k, and probably for less than 10k. But to get one of these out next week, it needs to get 300 likes. So anyway, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.